Thank you for taking a coffee break with Praise Center. Good morning. Welcome to Coffee Break with Praise Center. Thanks for joining me this morning. I hope and I pray that you've had a wonderful and blessed morning so far and that the rest of your day will be blessed because you decided to take a coffee break with us. Go ahead and grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your journals, and grab your Bibles. Get into a comfortable space if you can, and we're going to open up with a word of prayer, and then we're going to go right into our discussion today. All right? So let's pray. Father God, we thank you and we adore you this day. We thank you for your love and your kindness, God. We thank you for your tender mercies that you have bestowed upon us this day. God, we thank you for just allowing us the time to come and to sit before you, to gather your word and to speak to you on today. God, we ask that you be with us, lead us and guide us. I ask that you a special blessing on those that join me this morning. Bless them in a special way. Give them the desires of their heart and keep them. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, so let's get right into our discussion. So we have been, um, we are in the final sessions of this Live Bravely, Love Boldly series. If this is your first time joining us, make sure you try to take some time to go back and look at the recordings of the previous sessions that we've had um, and review those and just to kind of gather all the other uh, points uh, that we have the 21 ways we're discussing 21 ways to live a fierce hearted life and um, Today we're on number 19 if this is not your first time and you have been with us taking this journey with us I hope and I pray that this has been a blessing to you this particular series So once again today we're discussing number 19 of 21 ways to live a fierce hearted life Okay um, so we're on number 19. Let God tell you who you are. Let God tell you who you are. So my question, well, I have quite a few questions today. And so I, that's why I want you to get your journals and I want you to be able to write in those journals um, today. What is wrong with finding your identity in things that you can do? the way you look, the friends you hang out with, and so on. What is wrong with finding your identity in things, in other things, things that you can do, uh, the way that you look, the people you hang out with, the job you have, uh, the car you drive, uh, the places you have been able to adventure to? Is there anything wrong with that, um, shaping and finding your identity in those things? At the time, I think about um, a book that had, um, what was that book? Oh, my goodness. Live, Laugh, and Pray, Pray, Love, and Laugh, or something like that. Um, I had the book somewhere on the shelf. Uh, how she, this lady went up, well, you know, was on this journey looking, I, I don't know, she just was on the spiritual journey, and she um, went to all these different places, um, you know, to, I don't know if she was looking for her, trying to find herself, her spiritual way, her, her guidance. I don't know. But she went through all these different things, trying to shape her, you know, her journey herself around these things and trying to figure out where she fit in and what, you know, appealed to her and what applied to her. It made me think about that. What is, is there anything wrong with that? Going out and trying to find things to shape your identity or to, you know, build upon, build your identity upon? Everything that I mentioned, you know, your looks, your the things you can do, uh, the people you hang around, the, the journeys you take, all of that can change. And I say there's something wrong with it, I say. Now, you might come up with something different, but I say there's something wrong with, there is something wrong with uh, it when you use those things to shape who you are. To identify who you are because all those things can change your looks definitely can change um, your friendships can change those that you hang around with uh, you know the things that you're able to do that can change or they can sim just simply go away they can be non-existent they can be there one day and gone the next day all right so if they're gone if they're there one day and gone the next day what does that do for your identity I mean, do you just keep changing with the wind? Do you just keep, what do you do? 
when your foundation that that which you base your identity on your foundation of your identity has changed or is no longer existent i think about um the foundation of a house or a building if the foundation we, we lived in a house and one time it was it was um like it was flooding in certain spots and we had to have someone come out to make sure that the actual foundation of it wasn't like cracked or wrong because that would have that would have been travesty trying to pay for something like that you know if your foundation is not right and you build up on it you know th that what you build up on it is not going to hold is not going to there's going to be problems there's going to be issues i mean if you think about it like that and that's what you you think about when you say what is your identity built upon because your identity is important we've been talking about um knowing who you are over the last few weeks uh, making sure that you are not shaping yourself who you are being true to yourself your real self not shaping it around someone else patterning yourself after someone else I mean you can have examples you can have mentors and things like you know people like that but do you try to do everything that they do you know um, and you have to be careful and we often say that and it's not just a cliche or it's not just something older people say you know watch who you pattern yourself after watch who you're looking at you know to watch who you're trying to be like because that's not really who you are first find out who you are who God has created you and I'm jumping ahead to be but um, you cannot pattern yourself after any of these things because that foundation can leave it's gone if your foundation is gone what are you standing on <laughs> nothing nothing's there your actual identity the part of you that truly and actually describes who you are at the core of your being the actual you cannot change I don't matter how hard it doesn't matter how hard you try okay <sighs> I mean, I guess you can, I guess you can say, maybe I, I'll say, if you're mean, if that's who your identity, you, I guess you can change that. You can work on being nice, but that core inside of you, that the bottom line of you is, cannot change. I mean, you can pat it, you can soften it, you can surround it with different things, um, you know, but who you are cannot change your core your being cannot change you exist you're there um you you you, you know you have life the, that inner truth that actual part of you of who you are cannot change so with that understanding and i think we understand that you know your your true identity the core of your identity is important what you build upon is important with that what foundation I want to ask you and I, I want you to write these questions down in your journal because as you look back at it <laughs> you can look and see has things changed has your idea changed Has your thinking changed about uh, where you have laid your what have you built up your foundation what have you built upon okay what foundation have you built upon so what foundation are you building your sense of self? What foundation are you building your sense of self? The, this, the answer to this particular question really defines your life. Because if you're constantly seeking others to define, to build your sense of self on, that's, I mean, that's, it defines who you are. Okay, you're always you're that one that's always seeking others, always seeking others approval, always seeking others attention. Or are you that one that can, you know, have a goal, put it out, build up on it, no matter how hard it is, no matter how long it takes for you to achieve the goal, but you're persistent, you, you're working at it. You know that you're that strong, a strong person. And I call it not that you're, you know, overbearing and, you know, taking over people but you're that strong person where your mind is on a goal you're thinking about it and regardless of what's coming your way you're gonna pursue that yeah things may come to deter you and blow you but it doesn't it doesn't change who you are it seems like 
we would come it would come natural let me say this because we 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 put our we base our identity on a lot of things around us our surroundings our our everything okay but it seems like it would come natural to totally plant on God's foundation and that may seem you know I, just in my thinking um, it just makes it might it, to me it just seems like common sense but I say that because he created us <laughs> and not only created us but he created us in his image so it seems like it would be like a natural common sense kind of thing for us human beings that he you know that we would build our foundation our identity our self sense of self on god genesis 1 27 and it says so god created human beings in his own image in the image of god he created them male and female he created them so if he created us it seems like we would turn to the creator the one who made us in his own image to pattern ourselves after but that's not the case. That is so not the case. We build on our accomplishments and our failures. We do. We we are we build on our lineage or our ethnicity. We build on our job history or our you know status, our money or lack thereof. The approval or rejection of others we do we build on all these things we even build some of us may even build on the sins that that have that we were forgiven for you know anger and addictions and all this other stuff we build on our afflictions whether like cancer or our disabilities even you know our marital statuses married or divorced we build our identity well i've been divorced and you know i you know, so i can't you know i'll never find anyone i'll never find love again or whatever and you build your identity around those things we even build our identities around our denominations and even our titles and we can't do that it's interesting how we don't fall back or it come doesn't come naturally to totally plant our found on God's foundation who we are what we're trying what we're building up on God's foundation all of these so-called foundations that one typically bases you know bases or builds upon is really shaky it's really shallow it's really unstable I want you to write down 1st Corinthians chapter 3 verse 11 1st Corinthians 3 and 11 1 Corinthians 3 and 11 says, For no one can lay any foundation other than the one we already have. And that is Jesus Christ, which is Jesus Christ. We have a foundation, and we're constantly trying to rebuild or, or, or you know, gather another foundation, search out for a new foundation to build upon. It's it's just interesting that it what comes that the natural is for us to find other things to shape who we are and build upon. We have to be careful, and I say that not just um, you know being this stickler about, but we have to be careful that we don't find ourselves trying to build upon things, build ourselves, our character our, you know, our everything, our sense of self on anything else. Christ laid the foundation for us. He, he is that foundation and we should build upon his foundation. Okay. God created us in his image and we should figure out what that image is. You know, it's right there in the word, which goes back to every time we do coffee break, we always say, go back to the word. Get into your word and start talking to God and having a relationship with God. And therefore, he'll tell you, and I'm jumping ahead, he'll tell you what your image should be. <laughs> Let's go a little deeper into this. Let God tell you who you are. We would all love to be 
or to see ourselves as some kind of superhero. Being able to conquer all the bad in the world and, you know, being able to conquer and achieve all the, you know, make all these accomplishments. We would love to all be superheroes. But how long have we been told and know and have known God uses ordinary people to do extraordinary things? My mother used to sing that song all the time. Um, just ordinary people. God uses ordinary people. <laughs> doesn't matter how big or small you are. You know, what doesn't matter your, no, your, your intelligence at all. God uses ordinary. He, ordinary just means anybody. It doesn't matter what's going on. He can use you. The part, the perfect example for me, was uh, was is the, were the disciples. The disciples were full of everyday, all kind of background kind of group, <laughs> right? Peter, James, John, and Andrew were fishermen. Okay, yeah, they might have been business. A few, a couple of them might have been business owners. What we can gather of uh you know had their own fishing business but it wasn't like you know a high rise or anything like that you know fortune 500 company or anything like that right they were just ordinary people doing ordinary everyday things making a living let's see uh judas was a, a thief or an embezzler matthew was a tax collector um simon was a politician and all the, you know the others that were listed there, the other part of the 12, they were just people like you and me, just doing every day, trying to live life kind of things. But Jesus empowered them to turn the world upside down. He used just ordinary people. You don't have to act like or try to be like anyone else. That's all I'm trying to say here today to us. You don't have to wear the labels of others. Because God sees you right where you are. He sees, he knows who you are. And he sees you as a usable <laughs> person. A usable tool. God knows who you are and calls you to be who he needs you to be. And I say that, and I hope you hold on to that, because oftentimes we, and we have been saying this through this particular series, we sabotage ourselves from achieving, from accomplishing all the assignments that God has set for us to do, okay? We have a purpose, and God knows that purpose. He set the purpose, and all we have to do is just follow him through it. Don't try to look at what someone else is doing because the end result you want, you know, God says this is your assignment. And in your mind, you think the end result is what someone else is doing or what someone else has done. So you try to pattern yourself after that, whatever it is. It can be in your homes. It can be on your jobs. It can be in your ministry, whatever, wherever you are. Sometimes we do. We look at others because we want that outcome. But that might not be the way God wants you to receive that or, or achieve that. We have to be careful and know that whatever God calls you to, he's going to equip you. As long as you stay connected to him, he's going to bring you right through it. Let's read 1 Peter, and this is a familiar passage, 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. And whenever you get the chance, read the verses above it, okay? But 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. It says in the King James Version, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praise of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And verse 10, which in time past were not were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy. But have, but now have obtained mercy. Once we didn't, you didn't receive any. You received no mercy. 
Now you have received God's mercy. Okay? Once you didn't have any identity as his people, but now you are God's people. See, when you, what I'm going to say, when you came into the light <laughs> and received God and, and really came back to your, I'm going to say, came to your senses. I'm going to say back to your senses. Came to your senses, I often say, um, acknowledging and, and receiving Christ as your Savior is like coming to your senses. Like, I can't, I can't do this on my own. I can't live a, a productive, a, 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 a what I want to say, a, a successful life without Christ. And when you have, when you accept Him and receive Him as your own, and you have a relationship with Him, your identity <laughs> is actually exposed. You now understand how you're supposed to live. When you were living in a life of sin, when you were not connected to Christ, when you had not received before, if you could think back, I don't know, maybe for some that's too far to think back. But if you could think back before you actually received Christ as your Lord and Savior, what what were you, how were you, how were your thoughts? What were you thinking? How were you going through life, going through the motions? Kind of seemed like if you think about it, it seemed like it was kind of scattered. I know for me, it was just kind of scattered, trying to make things work, trying to make myself, you know, into something. It was chaotic. Too much thinking on my own. But when you accept Christ and when you come into the light of Christ, he kind of thinks for you or he kind of patterns your thinking, shapes your thinking, right? If you have this mind, you know, this mind of Christ, he tells you, he gives you insight. He gives you the wisdom. He gives you the knowledge and the understanding of how you're supposed to go and what you're supposed to do. It is a lot easier depending and relying on God. Some people might not think so. I mean, that's just my opinion. I think it is. I often tell you I'm not a very um, complicated, you know, complex person. I like things to be kind of simple, simplistic. And <laughs> if I don't have to, you know, really, oh, my God, you know, hover over it and what is it? Okay, what am I supposed to do and what? how is it supposed to be? But if I can rely on God, God, can you give me what I'm supposed to do, you know, Order my thoughts, order my thinking, you know, point me in the right direction. And he does it every single time. I'm not saying that I don't have to work at it sometimes, but if I go to God, it's much easier when God is directing you. You're not as scattered. You don't have as many headaches. You don't have, you're not as sick. You know, your stomach is not hurting all the time. And uh, if you think about it, if you pattern yourself and think on the things of God, how, honestly, he's faithful. All he needs is he's faithful and he's just to, and merciful <laughs> that he will take us through. All we have to do is let God tell us who we are. And we just have to be willing, you know, just be willing to be faithful and have this, have this faithfulness and willingness just to say yes. Just open up yourself and say Okay, God, guide me, shape me, mold me. How am I? Show me how I'm supposed to be. Who am I supposed to be? How am I supposed to build up myself in this, this world, this nation, right? We just have to have a faithfulness and a willingness to say yes. I hope that makes sense. Let me see where we're at in our time. I have some homework for you. I have some homework for you. So get your journals so you can write these this homework assignment down. There are a couple of questions. And in your private time, I want you to answer these questions. It's more than a couple. There's like four questions. I want you to answer these questions. And only you can do it because you gotta, you're going to have to think about it. Um, and I want you to think about it because sometimes we really don't think um, that our identity is a problem. When you become what, fierce hearted and you're trying to live a life full of God, your identity has to be full of God too. So the first question of your homework, in your own words, I want you to write this down in your journal because I want you to go back to it. In your own words, 
I want you to answer the question, what is identity? What is identity? What does identity mean to you? You know, the word, what, the, what does identity mean to you? Because maybe it's not a big issue because you really don't understand what it is or maybe you never even really thought about it because you just go through the motions of every day and just like, okay, well, this is how I've always been and this is how, you know, I act and respond and things like that. But is it, the, is it truly who God made you or created you to be? Does it include your purpose? Does it include, you know, does it include what God has set forth? The the idea, the the pattern, the everything, the purpose that God has set out for you? Does that, in, is that included in this identity that you have created? What is identity? Okay, and skip some spaces down and write um, the next one. Number two, what are some of the false identities that people around you cling to what are some of the false identities that people around you your circle those you come in contact with cling actually cling to i use an example um i often say a false identity of me what because i guess i you really give this off sometimes, is that I'm shy. And I get that a lot, you know, oh, you're so shy, and, you know, and I'm like, no, I just don't like to talk. So, yeah, it has nothing to do with being shy. I'm not, uh, you know, kind of afraid or intimidated or, you know, to do anything in front of anyone or give my opinion or anything. It's just that I don't really necessarily like to talk. And so I don't. And I don't like to be in folks' business, and, you know, I don't interject. I don't butt in. I'm getting, I'm getting better. But that's, you know, a false identity. And I, I have to say, okay, as God, you know, shows me more and more who I am, it kind of makes me, okay, well, you, this is how you're supposed to be. And this is, you know, this is what you're supposed to put out, all right? What are some, oh, I just use that as a, just a crazy example, but what are some false identities that people around you cling to? And it's not to say that it's, it's, it's a bad thing for you, but you really have to think about what are people, what are you putting out there that people are receiving? And is that really what you want to be putting out there? Is that the look, the feel, the the atmosphere you want people to get from you or, you know, okay. Number three, why is it important to know what your identity is? Why is it important for you to know what your identity is? Maybe it's simply so that you can start believing in yourself. When you know what your true identity is, you'll stop fighting or something else. I don't know. Oftentimes when we don't know our true identity, when we're not true and don't truly understand who God created us to be, which we're grasping at straws, we're, we're just trying to go, we're, we're trying to get things that don't even really pertain to us that we really don't need, that are not good for us, that won't benefit us. You know, and we're constantly going in circles or constantly wearing ourselves out trying to do something when that's really not who you are. So you need to stop. Okay? Maybe if you understand what your identity, who, you know, who you are, what your identity is, then you'll start actually believing in yourself. Hope that makes sense. It's for somebody. Number four, this is the last one. What is dangerous about finding your identity in something that can change or be taken away? What is dangerous about finding your identity in something that can change or be taken away? If you think, if you look back and you just look and just check yourself, check yourself. What have you been putting out? What kind of standards have you been 
you know, this is, this is who I am and this is just the way I am. How are you? What is that? And how did that come about? Where did that come from? This is what I'm saying. Find yourself. The things that you do, how you respond and react to things, where did that come from? How did you get there? How does that come to you? If you don't have a I don't care spirit, where did that come from? How did you get there? Did that just come on upon yourself because of other experiences? Or did God actually say, no, you need to do this. This is how you need to be. Honestly, talk to God. And I tell you, he will talk back to you. Tell him don't believe it, but I do. The chapter, this chapter in this book begins with this affirmation to hold on to. And I just want to read it to you. It started out, it says, you are actually quite wonderful. That isn't something you can see yet or anything you can feel most days. Have the courage to start believing it anyway. Because contrary to what you fear, it will humble you. It will make you lift your hands in praise to the one who made you. And then extend those hands to bless those around you. I read that because, and it stuck out to me because oftentimes we don't, because we don't know who we really are, we don't listen to God, or we try to be this person. I don't want to be like that. I want to be like this. What that does is it takes us, you know, out of when we're saying we don't want to be like, I don't want to be like that. I want to be like this. It's telling God, I really. <laughs> I don't really, you know, acknowledge how you made me. I don't really, you know, I'm not feeling that that way, that purpose, that, that I don't, don't want to go that way. I'm not getting what I need doing things that way. But what you're telling God is the way you created me is not right. What you're telling God is that <laughs> there is flaws in his design. What you're telling God is that you're wrong. Think about that. Think about that. The way God created you, how you are, the you know, how God created you is wonderful. You may not have grasped onto that yet, but how God created you is wonderful. And I guarantee if you live in that, live the way God has created, live out the way God has created you, your life, things would be so much, I want to just say smooth, easier not stressful, the stress, the worry, the sickness, the discomfort, everything will be okay. Not saying you're not going to go through troubles, not saying you're not going to go through um, conflicts and hardships, just saying that as you go through them, they're going to be a little bit better for you. They're going to, you know, it's going to turn out for your good and it's going to, it might hurt and you may cry a little bit. I have to always say that, but doing it with God and doing it God's way, ends up being the better way for you. I want you to write down that reoccurring scripture that we have been talking about or um, reading for the last few weeks. Psalm 139, 14. When you begin to say, God, okay, I might not have been, you know, doing it the way you, living my life or living out me the way you have designed for me to. But I'm going to take that back. I'm going to, and then read this, I will praise you. I'm just going to thank you for making me so wonderfully complex. I'm going to praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. Okay, your workmanship is marvelous. Okay, acknowledge that. Don't tell God he made a mistake with you. God doesn't make mistakes. And how well should we know it, right? All right. I think I'm going to stop here for today. I have a whole bunch more scriptures, but I don't want to give all those scriptures. Um, I want you to just take time to just really check your yourself. Know who you are. Be true to yourself. And when you understand your identity, when you see it, 
begin to thank God for it. And if you have to repent and say sorry to God for, you know, not living the way, not living out the way he created you to be, uh-huh, then, I mean, you know, it's okay. But just know that God has a purpose and a plan for you. Just let God tell you who you are. Don't try to figure out all on your own. Let God tell you who you are and build up on that. All right, so I just want to say God bless you to all of you that have joined us. And if you're in ever in the area, the Dumfries area, or anyone that you know are in, in the Dumfries area, stop by Praise Center, uh, Church of God in Christ, um, and fellowship with us. Learn with us. Grow with us. This is a place where we are firmly committed to empowering believers and changing lives. And that is through prayer, through the word, and through praise. We love God, and we love you. God bless you. Oh, to the rock.